Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're on Mantania transfer between Kron Aberrant and Chitin. It's a map that has not come up as much recently as I would have liked, but it is still a pretty popular map. Kron Aberrant in the bottom left corner and kind of in the top right corner. Kron Aberrant already going for a Grekum, while Chitin is also Grekum. So both players will be playing Grekum, another Grekum mirror match. And this map, in case you aren't familiar, is a fairly large map. It's got obviously starting points in the bottom left and top right corners as expansions towards the center in the east and the west as well as expansions in the north and south center and expansions at the bottom right and top left corners though typically what will happen is players will go for either this expansion here or they'll go for the further away corner expansion typically sometimes they'll go for the closer corner expansion but i've seen both frequently enough that it's hard to tell which one will happen Anyway, Chitin setting up his economy pretty quickly, and Kron Amberant also getting his economy up. He's getting three Octos. Actually, he's got three Octos. He's not committing them to economy yet. I'm not sure if he's scouting with them. He is scouting with his Akron, however, this is Assassin mode. So both players have starting Akrons that essentially represent themselves. If that dies, they have no control in the timeline of where the Akron is dead. But other than that, Akrons don't really do too much. So scouting is a common use for them, which both players are taking advantage of. Chitin setting his in, and Kron Amberant Actually, Chitin coming back to when he's looking, which is about a half minute down. So, at the 42nd mark, he's sending his scout in. He has his economy going. Kron Aberrant also getting up. So, both players going for pretty safe starts. Kron however, does have a couple Octos hanging out here. This is from his point of view, by the way. So, he is not using them. Probably just keeping them back just in case the Akron comes for, sc for scout prevention or... There we go. Actually, he's doing exactly that. He's trying to prevent Chitin from scouting, discourage him from staying in the base, and getting any information while Chitin is not doing the same. So Kron Aberrant gets full view of what Chitin is up to while Chitin does not hide at all what... Well, I should say, Chitin is not hiding anything while Kron Aberrant is making sure to hide everything. Chitin just double checking his time. He is not moving his Akron, though I'm sure he will be because he has to, otherwise he loses the game. So I wouldn't be surprised if he echoes this out, but no, he is in fact moving back. Kron Aberrant has dissuaded him from staying in the base because really it's that or lose the game. While Kron Aberrant has himself not been twitted, but an Octopod is coming up. Chitin is getting his own deterrent with an Octopod, which is going to be actually a, possibly a worse move, because Kron Aberrant has these Octos that were used for defense, but now they can be just used for economy. He can't just throw them on, become resource processors, and that's done. He's already got them, already got the resource processor half paid for. Whereas the Octopod, better defense overall, but... Given the Grecum Mirror match, it almost might be a better idea to stay with the Octos and then use them for economy when you get the chance, because the real threat for Grecum typically comes in once Spires come up, Reefs come up, and in order to get that, you need a lot of money. So I don't think there's going to be any major rushes going on. I mean, the Octos obviously can rush, but it's very rare that that happens. Therefore, I don't... And even if that did happen, having your own Octos would work quite well, being as that you'd be able to counter-rush if needed. So I'm a little bit surprised at what Chitin is going for with the Octopod, except for the fact that building an early Octopod is typically a good idea, just in this particular case, it doesn't quite transition that well from Scout Prevention, whereas Crimer's strategy does. So Crimer, both players do have four RPs, and the only difference being that Crown Aberrant has two additional Octos, which can become RPs very quickly and cheaply, while Chitin has the Octopod, which is better for defense and could allow for an offensive... Actually, I'm not sure he's going for any offensive moves after defending the scout off, but I don't... I don't see him doing that. No, it looks like he is just staying in the base for now. So it's at the three minute mark, and both players have been pushed away from the scouting. Well, see, Chitin, this is when he's pushed away from the scouting. At 249 mark, he's pushed away. Kron Aberrant has not yet gone up to this point to move away completely. He is not echoing out the scout yet. He's continuing to go in, even though he is getting hit by the Octopod. He will I guess survive. He is confident that he will survive at any rate. I'm fairly certain he will though. It looks like he's not taking that much damage for the way he's moving in and out of the base. But Chitin moving away and two Octopods are appearing to be on an intercept route actually. They're trying to stop this Akron from getting out but this is this is a little bit late. They might have been trying to intercept it before it got in so now it's completely in. And they are not there to defend it and dissuade it from staying there. Yes, he just barely... Yeah, here we go. This is at the two-minute mark, about 20 seconds down from what we were just looking at. And yes, the Octos just barely missed that Akron, but as you can see, moving back to base to intercept it completely, while 
the Octopod doing the same thing. Kaiden trying to intercept Cronamarin's Akron get in the way, so it's much harder for him to get out. And Kaiden also keeping his Akron at home. So both players, well, Kaiden has moved back. He isn't keeping his Akron in harm's way, while Cronamarin is actually not moving back from the looks of it. I mean, he's moving back a bit later, but he's not moving back earlier on. So his Akron will take a fair amount of damage. But Kaiden not sending out any forces to try to snipe it. It's is able to get out and will be able to heal up once it gets back to base. Which it should do probably around the four minute mark or so. And in the meantime, Crown just patrolling around. And here we go. Now he is now he is using these Octos to become RPs. Like I said, the slightly more effective idea, which I think Kaiden can capitalize on. He could go in with the Octopod and try to snipe that as well if he wanted to. Let's see, where is Kitan's Octopod? He does have... His Octopod mo is moving forward, is attacking. So he will be able to possibly take advantage of the fact that these Octos are out of position. They are being used for RPs. And Kronhammer is focusing very heavily on economy and tech. However, on this size of map, it shouldn't be too hard for Kronhammer to build up a couple more Octos to take out the Octopod. Because unlike the infantry or, I guess, tech zero units of the other two races, Octos are actually fairly potent against Octopods. They aren't that weak. And here I have another, actually, a Seppi. So Cronhammer getting his Seppi Reef and his, well, another Seppi as well. Probably just getting up a bubble wrap. Getting a couple Reefs, probably will be getting three ultimately. But for now, just getting the one and probably a second. It's the four minute mark, so neither player really taking up that much. Kitan also has his Reef up. He does have a couple more Seppis being built as well. So he's going more heavily for the bubble wrap. Actually, one of them probably becoming a Progen Seppi and the other one will be becoming another Reef. However, Kitan is not really set up to actually tech at all. He's getting a lot of Liquid Crystal, but not a lot of Q Plasma. And that means he can't actually do anything really with tech. And, however, he is going for offense. Here's the attack, the Octopod coming in, and it's actually this minute down from the present. So it's not that definite as what's going on. Kitan not focusing on it, letting it propagate on the time wave rather than trying to babysit it himself. Actually, going, wait, he's going to the Pillow Past Edge. From here, what is he doing? Because he is doing something important here. He, well, it's not doing anything that important. Cronhammer getting up advanced structures at this point in time, the 437 mark on the Unplayable Past Edge. Kaiden is building up a second reef here, but other than that, it doesn't seem to be actually doing anything. I think he was going to go for an edge attack, an Unplayable Past Edge attack with the Octopod, trying to make sure that Cronhammer couldn't possibly defend, but apparently no. He is simply waiting here. Almost like he was waiting for the Akron so he could snipe it as he got back to base, but no, he is not doing that at all. So Cronhammer getting up his Spire, he will be able to get air units momentarily. And actually right now, although he has no QP to do it with, but he, once he d does get that QP, he'll be fine. Seppies are patrolling for air units, so they will be able to hunt down anything that Kitan does send. However, Kitan not focused heavily on air units, he just is getting his Q Plasma RP set up now. Which means he's probably going to take another minute or so just to get any air units up. He doesn't even have a Spire at this point, and there's no point really. While Cronhammer is setting himself up to be able to get his fire. And here's that Octopod. It is going for an edge attack. I was right in the first place. So there's an edge attack coming in. Kaiden is dealing a fair amount of damage. Cronhammer can't really do too much to defend against this right now. And his Akron is coming back to base, but could be stopped before it gets in. So it can avoid being intercepted if it wants to. Nefaro trying to come up to deal with this. The two reefs are doing quite a lot to heal it up. However, they are low on energy. They are almost drained. Probably another four healings. And that's... There goes that Spire Faro, so that is going to be very detrimental. Cronhammer had relied on that to get his air units up. However, he hadn't gotten any air units yet, so it's not the biggest deal. However, this Octo coming in, half killing the Octopods. So that, like I said, Octos do have a decent chance of fighting the Octopods. But right now, one of the reefs is drained. The other reef almost completely drained. So both reefs are almost out, are out of energy. They can't heal up anymore. But the Octopod is pushed back. And Cronhammer, having hardly any healing energy left, his reefs are... Reefs are completely drained. He is going to be in a tight spot right now. Cronhammer could just finish this off. He, or sorry, Kitan could just finish this off if he wanted to. But he is just now getting advanced structures. Will be getting a Spire very soon. And actually, he just has advanced structures now. So he can get a Spire right now. And use that to build a variance. He has the QP to do it. He can get a Seppi Pot if he wants to. And being that Cronhammer's base is very weak at the moment. No, the Octopod going back home. However, Cronhammer still had taken a lot of damage. So his reefs are still very low in energy. Only one of them able to heal up to any appreciable amount. And this is this is the big nerf that came up from the most recent re version, the point release. 
1.1.1, sorry, 1.4.0.1, change the Reef Energy so that it's 16 Energy to heal instead of 5. And as you can see, it has a very big effect. Because it actually allows Reefs to run out of energy in practice. Anyway, Crown Armor getting a Sepi Pot as well, so Arianids won't be a major threat to him. He was already prepared in case any Arianids came in on Playable Past Edge. He had everything set up. However, Kaiden is still sending out a Sepi Pod. He will be attacking with that. And where his, his main base, he's building another Sepi Pod. So both Sepi Pods are being sent in. Well, I'm sure they're being sent in. The second, well, first one definitely going in. Second one will likely be going in fairly soon with the Octopod. So going in for a second assault with the Octopod. However, Sepi Pod support here will be very difficult to penetrate with the Octos as well and support in the ground. So really. Kitan is not much of a chance. The Octopod will try to help out with support against the Sepipod, but it's going to be very difficult to pull off well. And Kitan is at his own base is going to be... Well, not really doing too much more. Building more Sepipods. Just getting out Sepipod after Sepipod. And Crown Armor probably going to get an Octopod fairly soon. He has a lot more QP than LC. However, he does have a fair enough amount of ground support as it is, so I... Not entirely sure what his plan is here, but Sepipod moving out of position. Kitan... This is the perfect time for Kitan to strike. He has... Another Sepipod coming in, he has two Sepipods and an Octopod prepared to fight. A third Sepipod coming up and a fourth Sepipod is just growing up into a fully mature Sepipod. And Sepipod's coming in, intercepting Crown Armor Sepipod, killing off Crown Armor Sepipod near the Unplayable Past Edge. That is going to be a bit of a blow, losing that Sepipod and that's one down. So Crown Armor actually has domes, he does have some defense but that's not going to be enough. For, oh, sorry, that's going to be enough. Kitan will be able to get through that. But it's not going to be enough to stop Kitan forever. Though Kitan not building any Faropods is actually kind of surprising. The Octopods really, however, is the best counter for the Dome. But even then, with the Dome, Cryhammer is keeping himself quite safe. He does, however, have this expansion here, which is a little bit vulnerable. The Reef is healing it up, but has no other defense. So Kitan is definitely getting ahead when it comes to military. Crown does have a small economy advantage, but that economy advantage is going to be going down since that I mean that one expansion is all it really has over Kitan. And Kitan now having soft map control, he has he can go around and intercept and deal with some damage if if he wants to, really. So he doesn't have much to fear if he starts setting up expansions and going for that. But he does have no expansion plans at the moment from the looks of it. Still focusing heavily on building up Sepi Pods, getting his, getting his military going. Two, actually, never mind, he does have some expansion plans. Two Octos going for RPs, so that will handle that much. And getting weapons as well, so Kitan getting up to nukes. Crown Armor looks like he's trying to prep up to get to Chronoporting. Getting a lot of money for that, but I wouldn't think that's a good idea. He has only one Sepi his This Sepi Pod is his only military unit. That's pretty much it. Beyond that, he is completely economy focused so I'm not sure exactly what his plans are in that regard but he will actually find the expansion he will intercept it before Kitan's able to do any damage with it but Kitan like I said does still have map control these sepi pods he just needs to jump back and these sepi pods will come in and save the day as soon as he wants to really it anytime now there we go the sepi pods coming in and they will be able to tear apart Crown Aberrant sepi pod without any issue so Crown Aberrant will be losing the sepi pod if he doesn't do anything about it and there it goes completely dead no chance at all. And Kron Abrin here, we see he does have his defense still set up nicely, moving back to Sepipod, avoiding that combat, very wise. But still, that's going to be very difficult for him to deal with because this is... This is not an easy position. I mean, just look, he has his one base, he is getting chronoporting, but that's it. He has no military coming up, his economy is doing okay, but Kitan is able to expand and protect any expansions he chooses to take. So. Kitan really doesn't have anything to worry about. He just needs to get going in about five minutes from now. He should be able to tear apart Kronhammer no problem. And he already has weapons. He just needs enough for a Plasma Cruise Missile, which I think he's probably what he's going for. He might end up getting Chronoporting and go for Chrono Bombs, but I kind of doubt it. A lot of players have been using Plasma Cruise Missiles, and that would require getting Chronoporting, which he doesn't have. So, really, here we go. Chronhammer getting Assault in his, in his expansion, having one dome, but it goes down. The Reef also doing what it can, but this Reef is... Well, it has to reheal one thing, so it's not a big deal, but it is still running out of energy before that dome... Well, it doesn't matter, the dome's dead. It doesn't heal it quickly enough for the dome to actually stay alive, and it will be running out of energy if that becomes a battleground. Besides just the slaughter that Kitan is perpetrating here. And Crown Aberrant... 
This is a good time he could go back and try to deal with this expansion here. And it looks like he may be doing so exactly... But no, he's not. He is... He was just taking damage. Kaiden, for some reason, moved back. I'm not sure if he was afraid of the attack or what exactly he was thinking. Ah, I see. He was moving back to retreat to heal up his Sepi Pods so he doesn't lose them. Good idea for the most part, although he could just save one of the Sepi Pods and keep the other two assaulting. Not sure why he moved all three of them back, but going back to attack, Crown Aberrant from his point of view at the 13 minute mark, about a minute down from, or half a minute down from there, does actually have a couple Sepi Pods prepped to defend. But it doesn't really matter. These Sepi Pods, actually, they're coming in to try to defend, getting rid of one of the Sepi Pods, and will be chronoporting. So he will be able to take care of the Sepi Pods that were here already. Or, or not chronoporting, actually. I thought he was. That was bizarre. He was pausing like he was going to chronoport. There we go, because now he's going to be chronoporting. There we go. Sending the chronoport orders, and. Oh! Oh, I see. He probably queued the chronoport orders instead of. Yeah, that's what he did. He queued the chronoport orders instead of simply setting chronoport orders. Common mistake to make. And here's actually. Plasma Cruise Missile coming in, but getting shot down before it deals any damage. But yeah, it's a common mistake to Q Chronoport Orders instead of hitting them, because it's very easy to just be holding the Q button whenever you're doing anything. And here we go. Octo coming back, setting up a dome. In case you're wondering, this game was played with Morph with three Chronoport Delay on, which was a setting that was added a while ago, since originally you could Morph with three Chronoport Delay, and then it was changed that you couldn't, and then it was a setting that you could, and that setting is basically by default on in practice. Not act not actually by default on, by default is off, but everyone plays with it on anyway. So that that worked out for Crown Aberrant. So we'll be able to defend that no problem. Kitan, however, doesn't seem to have committed very much to that attack regardless. He's letting that base alone. I mean, he does have some defense there. I think the blue time move will carry forward the construction of that dome, and thus the deaths of those Sepi Pods. So I think that these Sepi Pods here we see for Kitan are not actually going to be there. They're going to be dead. We'll see shortly, though. The two Sepi Pods are up here. Crown Aberrant is sending them back in time as well to help defend, but I think this is a little bit excessive. The Sepi Pods that were there from Kaiden are going to be dead. As we can see, the new damage being taken, and no, that's just the Octopod. I'm not sure why... I'm not sure why Crown Aberrant keeps pausing. Normally when players pause like that, it's because they are chronoporting. But I do not see the chronoport occurring. And here we are. We have a chronoport occurring, but... Lots of Octos actually coming back to Chronoport for this. A little bit surprising, and no, here we are. There's the Sepi Pods I was looking for. Chronoporting back, but getting killed in the past anyway. However, Kaiden losing his Sepi... All three of his Sepi Pods. Kaiden has no Sepi Pods left. The Sepi Pods, like I said, we saw in his base. These three Sepi Pods... Well, three of those Sepi Pods do not exist. Two of them still do, probably. But definitely three of them don't. So, good use of Chronoporting. Chronoporting is going to have to worry about that, though. Kaiden is getting his own Chronoporting, and might be sending back these Sepi Pods... Some of which I'm pretty sure are the Sepi Pods that just died to deal with this and try to get rid of this base before it becomes a real threat, but I think it's too late for that now. Crown Aberrant pretty much saved it. I don't see any anything really coming in to save to go back on that, but Kitan appears to be trying, definitely. And playable past edge, he is going towards this base, and here we have this is when you can actually figure out what's really there. The, like I said, these two Sepi, Sepi Pods are the only ones that actually existed anymore. And now Kitan realizes this moves them back. He doesn't have really any forces to, to speak of, to be honest. All he has were those two Sepi Pods. He thought he had five, now he has two. So I thought it was a good idea to look back in the past a bit to make sure that what you think exists actually does, because it certainly didn't. He lost everything that he had set up there. However, Crown Armor did spend a lot of money chronoporting back Octos to build up these domes. That's a little bit risky. I mean, that's a lot of money spent just for the defenses there. I think Kitan, his best bet would be to set up expansions and really set up his chronoport defenses so he has everything set up nicely in case Kramer does chronoport back units. But even with that, Kitan... So he's sending out some plasma cruise missiles, doing what he can with that, but... There is some damage dealt. Actually, main base taking a ton of damage. Kramer losing his all of his RPs in his main base. Everything taking quite a lot of damage. The reefs will be drained heavily after they're done healing up everything. I think at this point, it's when Kitan's just going to go swoop in for the kill with these Sepi Pods. Crown of course, is going to be trying to go back and heal that up, I'm sure. He does actually have a Chrono Bomb coming in as well. But that's a Chrono Bomb against Crown Aberrant. So it looks like Kitan is just going for the Akron kill while Crown Aberrant trying to finish off what I can, what Kitan has set up for... 
was going to say Iketin for some reason. What Kaiden had set up for his economy for a small expansion, Kaiden's only shot is that one assault, which he's doubtless going for very soon. But it's going to be difficult for him to pull it off because, well, Chronomer just has Chronoporting, has had Chronoporting longer, and has more QP in the bank. So he can more easily set up the Chronoport assaults. However, Kaiden at the edge of the Implayable Past. Sorry, this is inside the Implayable Past, Chronomer's point of view. But Kaiden is at the edge of the Implayable Past. Just double checking the Plasma Cruise Missile, which he has sent. Which is getting shot down. That, that's surprising. I, it had hit. How bizarre. I, I, that Cruise Missile had hit. So I guess he got shot down in this iteration or got lucky. I'm not sure what's going on there. But Kaiden losing his only chance of actually pulling that off. Surrenders. That was a very quick game. For a map like Mantanier Transfer, that was surprisingly fast. So, hope you enjoyed that. Just wait for Kaiden to actually make a surrender final, and then move on to the next game. So, stay tuned, and I'll be back shortly.